Good evening. I'm happy that you came to visit with us again. I'm going to introduce my guest um, right here at the beginning, and then we will just share some things with you. This is my good friend, Nancy Williams. Good evening. And I'm glad you came. Just pretend you're at my house. And I certainly we'll, I will. We'll just go for it. Would you like to tell the visitor, um, excuse me, the friends, uh, how we met? Uh, it was in October of 1995. I had spent quite some time, about four months in Idaho. I had decided I was going to, um, I don't know if, you should, if I should call it a sabbatical or I just needed to get somewhere. So I lived in a tent on a creek by the name of McAllister Creek for four months my. by myself. Did my washing in the creek. Uh, it was a very, very enlightening experience. And um, prior to that, I had been in Illinois and received, I found some really, really neat stones in a town by the name of Redbud. And so when I came back from Idaho, I had to interject that because it's you'll see how it all comes together here in a minute. I saw your name in a in an advertisement, and there was just something I had to call you, and so I called you, and you weren't there. And then I tried to find you. Anyway, ended up at your house, mm -hmm. and I knocked on the door, and there you were. And we talked, and we talked, and we talked, and I went home, and I felt extremely led to bring this uh, stone to you and then I guess I can pick it up from there yeah mm -hmm. this lady had painted a picture of my father and somewhere in that picture there were objects she uh, had hidden mm -hmm. and one of the objects in there looked like something round and uh, it had a face like Akhenaten the Egyptian king mm -hmm. And so when Nancy brought me the, the stone, lo and behold, it was the same thing that was in my picture. The wasn't same, it? exact. Yeah. Um, what I like to share with you here is, is the opening shot that we had today. Th this picture belongs to my grandson, and the name of the show today is May I Ask Your Age. And so what I want to show you is that no matter how old we are or how young we are, there's certain things that we do and that we learn. Mm -hmm. So this particular little boy, when he was six years old, um, he was staying with me for his birthday. And I asked him, uh, I said, what would you like for your birthday? And he said, I want to go to an art gallery. Now, I thought there was an unusual request for a little boy. And I said, well, I don't know where I can find an art gallery. And he answered, well, I saw it on TV. It's at the Thai. For the friends they don't live here, the Thai is a Hotel. Hotel, motel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that has art shows and, and festivals mm -hmm. and bands and things like that. And ever once in a while they host, um, I believe they call it starving artists. Yes, they uh, do. They do. Starving yeah. artists. And he had seen that on the news, so that's where he wanted to go. So we went there and he insisted that was the painting that he needed for his birthday. And, um, and he kept pointing to the star, you know, and he kept saying, uh, that's me. Oh me, that's me. And I thought that was so wonderful. That was when he was six. Now, when he turned eight for his birthday, I said to him, let's go and buy yourself a birthday present. And again, let me get you to hold my favorite pen here. Mm -hmm. Again, this is what he wanted. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I broke it. Would you believe it? There's a whale here that... I believe originally it, it was up here. And that's what he picked for his birthday. Then he didn't want it wrapped when we were at the mall, you know, and someone saw us and they said, oh, what do you have there? And he said, I needed it. I needed it. That for his eighth birthday, and that's what he needed. And the reason I'm telling you this is that sometimes we are very special from the time we are here. Mm -hmm. And we are also very determined without knowing Mm -hmm. Why we do things the way we do. do them. And only when we look at it backwards can we. Can we see. Exactly. Can we see why we're mm -hmm. doing the things that we are doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to put that back down here. Now. What an interesting piece of work, though, for uh, such a youngster to pick out. 
exactly. So you know, it wasn't a toy. It yeah. wasn't. Uh, he has. Hmm, it's going to be interesting to uh, watch his life or to see why he really right. needed it. Okay. On top of that, instead of listening to rap and rock and roll, he comes to the house and he listens to whales for hours. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even eventually, we're going to talk about something that is referred to as the primal scream. Yes. And that's going to be the serious part of the show. So in the meantime, we want to explain to you that we didn't get from here to there and nothing in between. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> we didn't get from here to there and nothing in between from the beginning to a scream and nothing in between. Nothing You're in between, absolute, yeah. That's absolutely correct. So I believe that's why we started with young, you know, very young things. Um, when you told me about your trip to um, Idaho mm -hmm. and you lived in a tent, you mm -hmm. said, you know, what, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You didn't know what I meant. No. Uh, um, I think living in the tent was, um, for me, was one of the most peaceful experiences mm -hmm. I've ever had. And listening to the water and the creek and... Uh, and other sounds, and it didn't take long that I could identify the sounds of the night and anything that was uh, what I considered a friendly, uh, secure sound, part of my environment. And it didn't take long for me to pick up or anything that was out of that environment that I became very aware of, like. Uh, one night uh, some hikers were coming in and they were coming towards where my camp was and it it just sounded like rustling bushes but i knew someone was walking i mean it was okay but i picked that up immediately that that was not the normal song mm -hmm. or sound of the night mm -hmm. and i had some very interesting experiences it was in rattlesnake country and i have been deathly afraid of snakes mm -hmm. all my life and so it was kind of, for me, a test and um, uh, an interesting story. I uh, had a walking stick, a very sturdy walking stick, mm -hmm. and it's a good idea to rustle the bushes as you're walking along because, you know, they don't really like us. I don't know if they like us or not or don't, but I can't inject poison into their system. They can into mine, so I just as soon stay away from them. Mm -hmm. well, that's a good idea, Nancy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. And they, 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 with the rustling uh, bushes, they crawl off. Let me help you with this Oh, here. excuse me. Before you hang yourself, now take my pen back, thank you. But in any <laughs> event, uh, I was on my way down. I had a bucket full of laundry in the creek. I had a round little pool that I did the scrubbing in. Then over here was a little waterfall, and that was my rinse water. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and this was a very sturdy stick. I put the stick down, and it broke in two, and started, because there was a, a little bit of a hill, started rolling down. And I still think it was, uh, I think, my guardian angel that mm -hmm. broke the stick, because two more steps, and I'd have stepped right in the middle of a rattlesnake. Oh. I just turned around, up the hill I went, sat down in my chair and started to cry. I thought, what are you doing out here in this wilderness by yourself playing Annie Oakley? And mm -hmm. I'm just, just sobbing and I said, you need a dog. That's what you need. You need a dog. And I looked up and over the grass, staring at me, was this blue healer dog, mm -hmm. the most beautiful dog. And he was just looking at me and I said, well, who are you? I said, well, come on. And he came right over like we had been friends forever. He stayed with me in camp all day, uh, slept in front of my tent that night. When I got up in the morning, he was gone. I was a little sad, but mm -hmm. it, then about two weeks later, I'm coming home. I had to go into town to get some supplies, and it was late in the evening. And I personally think this was, uh, do you have some, a, a test for me? No, I was oh, trying to. Oh, I keep to, hitting uh, my microphone. Yeah, and, and the friends is going to really buzz at your ears when you hit your <laughs> microphone. It's going to say, oh. I'll, I'll try to keep my hands still. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm excited. It's really hard yes, to do. I know. Yeah, so, hey, thanks. Cool. Uh, but, and I think this was a test for me to see, because mm -hmm. he was there 
uh, when I needed him. But I came in and I smelled the pungent odor of skunk and he had been absolutely sprayed in skunk. I get out of my car, it's dark, I'm going, oh no. And I took him down to the creek and fortunately I had this uh, biodegradable, everything I used in the creek was biodegradable, but, and it took uh, strong odors out. It took us several washings and uh, we got most of the odor out and I had so, some big uh, towels and I dried him off and talked to him and he slept in front of my tent again that night. Mm -hmm. The next morning he was gone and I never ever saw him again. But it was really for me uh, a, a moment in time when I just b said I needed, I need a dog. Mm -hmm. I and needed, got one. and I got one. So I think. Yeah, now a couple of years later, um, I ended up with an RV and I took off across country. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to live in a tent. So my circumstances were by choice. Mm -hmm and a little better, and I ended up um, telling my stories to a, a couple of dogs. Uh, one oh. was, yeah, one was a little mutt called Dog. I didn't uh -huh. want to know his name. I didn't want to get attached to him, mm -hmm. and the other was Smokey, uh, a Chow Chow. Oh. And so sometimes things are brought in into, uh, you know, they bring things into our lives mm -hmm. that's really important to us. And you have a really good relationship with rocks too, don't you? Oh, yes. I, yeah, do you want to tell me about that? They're just, well, yes, the rocks remind me of people. No two are the same. Mm -hmm. I have been very, very much uh, interested. They have been, I've been very fond of. They've been very, very much a part of my life since I was a very small child. And as a matter of fact, I have carted around the same buckets of rocks since uh, for 30, 40 years. Moving one year, I mo one year, no. In two years span one time, I moved 13 times. So you can imagine mm -hmm. the difficulty of moving all those rocks, but those rocks came with me. Do you wanna, wanna share one or two of us, uh, two of them with us? I, I got this one in um, Idaho out of the um, uh, Salmon River, and it just struck me as a map of the sky, of the universe. It, I, to me, I see stars, I see, uh, what would be a map, you know, where mm -hmm. we would travel. Um, this is a part, I didn't, my niece brought this back for me. I personally did not get this, but it's very near and dear to me. It's a part of the, the uh, uh, part of a, and I can't remember the name of it, the main, the big pyramid, pyramid in Egypt. Giza, yeah. Giza, right. Mm -hmm. And this is sand from around the side of it. These little black stones, and this is what I get so excited about. I picked those up. They were very rough looking stones on the beach down at um, Westport. And as a matter of fact, this is what they would look like. But after they're polished and polished, they end up with this beautiful shine on them. And I personally think we are, that's what we, our lives are about here on this earth is mm -hmm. We start out some a little rougher than others, some not so rough, but our spiritual growth, I believe, is the main and main purpose, main purpose for our visit on this planet. And I believe that sooner or later we will all end up like beautiful shiny stones. Cool. Some of us are pearls, yes. sapphires, and sapphires, jewels. And That's jewels. a very good word. Now, I. The name of the show is May I Ask Your Age, mm -hmm. so um, the thing is here, we are at least a half century. I'm 56, I'll be 50, let me see, yes, I'll be 57 in August. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm 52. Mm -hmm. So what happens is we started out as, as children, mm -hmm. then I believe we did the wife thing. Oh yes. And a mother thing. Four times. Mm -hmm. I have four daughters and nine mm -hmm. grandchildren. And it seems every time we have an experience with a mate or a child or something, mm -hmm. we sort of collect, um, not dust, but you know, kind of, help me, not dust, but, oh, we collect but little pollens. Pollens. And, and from those time periods, and we just carry those with us, would you agree? Um, 
Yes, I, I, when you said pollens, I thought more of a, the beautiful inside of a flower, and I can't honestly say mm -hmm. that that's what we, we collect some of that, mm -hmm. and then we collect charcoal. Yeah, in other words, we're busy, we were busy as a bee. We were busy as a bee, absolutely. So each time we, we have an experience where something is left over, and whether it's hanging on our wings or our feet or, mm -hmm. or anything like that, we just kind of take it along. And occasionally, um, our bucket gets a little overloaded. Yes, very overloaded. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of where we're aiming uh, for the mm -hmm. main part of this visit, and then we can get back to the right. lighter part. Um, mm -hmm. I wrote a book in 1997, and mm -hmm. um, I was talking about what had happened to me when I experienced what is called a primal scream. We're not going to um, recommend books to you, even there there are some out there. We're no. not even going to recommend a therapist to you, even though there are some out there. Because I don't think that we can deliberately or plan on experiencing anything like a primal scream, would you No, mean? no. You cannot mm -hmm. read a book and say, well, you know, that's something I would like to experience, so exactly. I'm going to breathe six times and, exactly. and all that and yeah. scream. No. Yeah. So as um, Nancy is a, f a person that I wrote about in my book, and uh, so what she did, she came and looked, you know, and to, to see if it met with her approval because almost everybody had allowed me to um, use their, their name. Mm hmm and I called you Nancy. Yes, you did. And you said I want my whole name in here. That's right. <laughs> so we did that. <laughs> and then she my, did. It's probably going to be the only time of my whole life that my whole name is going to be in print in a book. And now you have it on a TV show. Oh, well, this is true. That? This yeah. is true. And so as she's looking this over, she said that I forgot something. I left out the nothingness. So how would you like to start? to talk about your experience or, or it, it, might be, it might be a little hard because it's very detrimental. Um, leading up to um, what happened to me, I had gone through a divorce that was extremely traumatic for me. That's one of the reasons I ended up in Idaho. Uh, I, the relationships within my family were not like I had, um, things were just not going well in my life. Um, and after I came back from Idaho, I was, someone had wrecked my car, and so, which was really a blessing in disguise, but in any event. So I didn't have any transportation, and I had found that things were just, I was, it was like, I was here, but I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. It was like, I was not here. Um, and I didn't want to be here, you know, not, I, it, it, I would have just, I wish I could have just been transported someplace else, but that of course does not happen. But in any event, the night that this happened to me, uh, I was, uh, and it is still, it's odd. something happened and I left where I was and I went out to my car and I sat down and this scream came out of me that I have never ever heard, never. It sounded like a wild animal and all this mucus came running down my, out of my nose and out of my mouth and these tears. I hope your friends will forgive my response here. That's okay. But, uh, and then this nothingness, this incredible nothing, just nothing. You felt nothing, nothing. And I drove home, and I, I didn't know at the time what had happened to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't until... Uh, as a matter of fact, I think it's we talked about it, that I knew what had happened. I thought I was going a little bit <laughs> not so maybe. Mm -hmm. But I do remember after the event 
sitting in my car. I couldn't leave for a while. I couldn't drive. And the incredible feeling of nothing. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anything left in you. It was like all those hurts or all that, like you had said, pollen or dust or whatever, yeah. uh, had all the tears, I think every tear that you had ever held back, every hurt from the beginning of time, I think, comes out. Gets it. And it's so incredible. I don't ever, ever want to experience it again. And I don't, I w would hope and pray that no one has to experience it. It's exactly. not, yeah. you know, this business about, oh, you want to experience, you want to get exactly. back to and do your primal scream. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. That's not, <laughs> I don't think that's a good yeah. idea. Do you? No, I don't. Uh, what happened to me was I, uh, a, a person very close to me had, wrongly got accused of committing a crime. Mm -hmm. And um, for a long time we thought the whole thing was a joke, but eventually it turned out it was not a joke. And um, my childhood wasn't, you know, typical, right. you know. No. We, I did not have a typical childhood. And so things was kind of hard for me, um, but bearable, you know. And then when when that happened uh, with her mom, what happened is we thought out of this jury that there would be at least one or two, uh, I won't say decent people, but we knew that the whole thing was so odd that, and so, so weird that somebody would start asking questions and the fact that they would um, find him guilty never entered our minds, right. you see. And, but they did, they found him guilty. And I remember standing on the courthouse steps um, for hours actually. And then mm -hmm. the, um, the security guard came and um, I'm a little slow too because I'm trying to not to relive what happened to me. Well, anyway, the gentleman said that it's all over, you have to go home now. Oh, and that was and, and it. I couldn't quite comprehend that that was really all I could do. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember how I got home. Mm -hmm. And um, I did get home. I was standing at my kitchen table, <coughs> excuse me. And I heard something scream. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't really a scream, it was more of a howl. Mm -hmm. And it's like my insides had split. Mm -hmm. And that is not part of multiple personality no. disorder. I like for you to know this because I know what that feels like too. That's another story. <laughs> it sort of split me and mm -hmm. I heard this, an animal, a being, a something, it was howling, just howling. And I remember thinking on this side, why don't you shut up? Just mm -hmm. be quiet. And like it was this side of me was talking to this ancient side over here. It's like I had been there for millions of yes. years. I had never heard anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I went through the same thing like you, you know, my, the tears and, and all the ugliness there. And then my thought was, this is it, I have lost it. And I'm still talking to mm -hmm. whatever this is over here. I have no comprehension of time. Uh, I remember thinking call 911 because mm -hmm. that's what we told, call 911. Mm -hmm. But that only lasted a second, in kind, call 911 and then what? You know? Right, <laughs> what are they gonna do? Yeah, <laughs> then I thought maybe my mind was gone and I had died mm -hmm. or something and I was somebody else now. But that wasn't it either. And then there was that nothing. nothing. It was like, I nothing. didn't know was I here or mm -hmm. had I left or was I crazy? But all I know is one part of me still talked to another part mm -hmm. of me that was just growling and howling at mm -hmm. myself. That's, I, I suppose, uh, no, it isn't a scream. It's a, it comes from the very bottom guttural noise up and out mm -hmm. that, you know, a scream is 
you think of it as a uh, high pitched or something Nothing. this is not high pitched it is like a, the oh i've never heard and like i said nor do what i ever it again it comes from the bottom of your being mm -hmm. however old that is yes. and that's why we named it show like that i had um I don't watch television very often, mm -hmm. but I caught a glimpse of the Lisa show here a few weeks mm -hmm. ago. And they were talking about um, where the young girls, they, uh, they get pregnant and then they give birth and get rid of their children. And that was certainly nothing that I wanted to watch. No. So, and it's a really old TV. You know, everything mm -hmm. I have is very ancient. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and so it doesn't have a remote. So I walked over to flip the channel to get out of this, you know, state of mind. And one of the mothers said that she had kind of suspected the girl having done something like that and she raised her blouse and then the mother knew instinctively, instinctive, that's a key word here, mm -hmm. instinctively that something was wrong. And then she said she started to scream mm -hmm. and the daughter said, you wasn't screaming, you was howling. howling. And neither Lisa nor anybody in the audience had caught that or picked up on that they were mm -hmm. talking about a primal screen Scream. there. And as a result of that, I thought um, I would ask my good friend mm -hmm. Nancy to talk about this because this is really nothing you want to discuss every day and we've, no. we've sort of prepared for it, you know. Yes, we have. Yeah. And I did have some reservations about doing it because I was hoping that I wouldn't break down and, and uh, or I was hoping I wouldn't get teary, but it's hard for me, and I don't talk about it very often. Yeah. You and I discuss it. Um, I recently, in um, January, no, no, when was it? I discussed it with someone for the first time in a long time whose mother had passed on, and I was really led to go over there and visit with this mm -hmm. person, and I shared that with him. And I don't know why I shared it with him, but it was he and his wife. It was a nice thing to do and nice in so much as I had never really talked with these people yeah. that much. And when I left, I felt like we were much better, much better acquainted. And, and uh, I just could relate to them. And I think they could relate to me a lot more. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I think we have experiences in our lives well, I know we do, and as you know we do, that in some way affect and help other people mm -hmm. to uh, get on or manage their lives. Because I think we're all connected. We're all connected. Now, um, it is said that we give permission for things to happen to us. Mm -hmm. and sometimes we give permission without realizing what it is that <laughs> is we're really going to do. But what I walked away from, well, let me get back to my little episode here. Um, mm -hmm. Once I realized that, no, I wasn't dead. You're right. You okay. know, I wasn't dead and everything was still working. I called my daughter and uh, we went to the barn and bought myself a dress. That's mm -hmm. how I dealt with it. Um, I have known other people that did not handle it that well and unfortunately we have lost them. That's um, true. But here again, i like to let you know that it's not a good idea. And um, they probably hate me for this, but I will, really don't care one right. way or the other. It's not a good idea to make an appointment with your therapist with your therapist, and say, today I'm going to have a primal <laughs> screen. <laughs> Forgive me for yeah. laughing. But and, and I really believe that what they refer to as a primal scream and what happened to us is not, it's not even closely mm -hmm. related. Would you agree? Not even. Not even no. closely related. Now, Nancy um, was gracious enough to leave her phone number with me and the station and at the end of the program, I believe. And that's very rare for you to give out the phone number. Yeah, and I if don't. there's anyone there that ever runs into anything like that, please give us a call. We don't care if it's late. And no. I don't like people before noon, 12 noon. Uh, it's if, okay with me before if, 12 noon. If something happens to you at 10.30 in the morning, call me because it mm -hmm. is something very, very serious. That's right. And that's why we did want to talk about this and bring that to your attention. It's, it's nothing to worry about. 
ahead of time. It's nothing to stress yourself about. Um, there is people this has never happened to. Is but if it does, just know that... You aren't crazy. No, but I, I thought so. I did too. Um, I thought I was losing my mind. I thought I was an animal. Yes. You know? I had flipped over the edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, chances are you might never experience that in your lifetime. But if you do, please mm -hmm. um, just go with it. And here again, before we get back to to the box that you probably have had to talk about. Oh, no. Um, it, no, this is important. And, I, you know, we tend to put off things that mm -hmm. are less than that. Sure, I'd rather talk about my rocks and how I think God makes everything so different, you know. Mm -hmm. There's no two things alive from rocks to feathers till you name it. But the fact of the matter is, is we're people and no two, not, there aren't any. They're, they're even identical twins are not identical. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, um, I don't, I lost my thought there. We're not identical. Well, we are all related from That's right. way back when. when. Mm -hmm. It might be millions, millions of years. And it's all, the, it's, it's the same universal consciousness that connects us all, whether mm -hmm. we we people, with the different races, whether mm -hmm. we animals, anything like that. But. It is just so, it was so old and so old, and that's all I can say, that's and right. so old that so old. if we would have to put a time on it, how old, now I'm going to ask you, mm -hmm. may I ask you your age, how old do you think you were? Oh, in that scream? Yeah. Oh, gadzooks. I can't even. Um... Timeless. That's exactly what I was just going to say. Timeless. There, I can't give you, I can't give you uh, time from the from the very first time I became a spark. Yeah. <laughs> that's and that's why they call it primal, like primal, like before, mm -hmm. before, before. You know. And uh, actually, we attempted to tape this show last week, mm -hmm. and uh, you chose to get sick. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we thought, well, <laughs> it wasn't the time, so today you was almost late. That's right. And so we said, well, well sooner or later, later but we'll we get were there. very persistent to, mm. to share yes. the story with you. And for that, um, mm -hmm. I thank you, my friend. Well, I thank you, because mm -hmm. we've, both, we've both been through a lot of different things, Lillian, mm -hmm. and we've both talked about and shared a lot of different things. And you, I've seen you help so many people. And... That's, I really believe that's what our mission here on earth is, mm -hmm. is. And I think when we step outside of that and we think more in terms of me, 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 um, I don't know. I think that's what causes all the grief and strife. And it breaks my heart when I see our youngsters shooting our youngsters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think. We're putting out thoughts, not we, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, but I think the consciousness, you know, instead of being so concerned about three cars and five car garages <laughs> and mm -hmm. all this, I think we ought to be sharing more and carry, or caring more for one another and caring less about how we look to everyone. That's how I feel. So, and I don't know where that came from, but that's just uh, that's the way I've been feeling for quite some time. Is is, um, and I see this with my grandchildren. I have nine of them, and um, and they're all into rocks. Mm -hmm. Well, the babies aren't, but uh, they will be. Uh, and that's all, uh, Danny. Uh, one of my granddaughters wanted for her birthday, which is in July, which I was thankful it was in July because all she wanted to do was go look for rocks with her grandma. And so we but isn't that off. wonderful? But but you know what happened to us when we were mothers? We were busy doing um, the and wife. we couldn't do that. No, we had to go to work, and we did the very best that we, we mm -hmm. could. Uh, our background, the way we was raised, we wasn't as in tune mm -mm. as we are now. 
Mm -hmm. this, this is true. So now the grandkids, they get a double dose of culture and mm -hmm. um, knowledge and all these things. And here again, it shows that with age, we change our perspective. Oh, we sure do. Mm -hmm. And time, you know, time moves mm -hmm. forward for the new, for the new mm -hmm. people to, to do what it is that they will be able to do here eventually. Mm -hmm. um. Um, I think that uh, when, you, when you said it, just uh, in my mind, when you said, you know, when we were mothers, we didn't have time. And I, and I don't know that we necessarily had as many patients either because we really didn't know how. No one gave us a book. Nobody gave us anything. Uh -uh. Just here you go. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Here are these babies. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I will tell you this, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, as sincere as I can be, I am so thankful I had my four girls because I really believe if I hadn't had those four girls, I probably would have ended up being one of the most selfish, self-centered people in the whole world. And those girls really made me, you, I had to share. Mm -hmm. I had to uh, learn to become a child because I had four of them in five years. Mm -hmm. And it was either learn to become a child and not care if the house was spotless and play with my children or their childhood to be remembered with nothing but screams and mm -hmm. hollering at them. And But I do remember that uh, before I had children, BC I call it, uh, I wasn't a very nice person. And it's the truth. And they really helped me. Yeah, so when we add up all the ups and downs in our lives, you know, like we said, with the little mm -hmm. pollen we collect. Mm -hmm. And then once we got that out of our system, things changed uh, somewhat uh, great deal. for both of us. And, and I want to tell the friends too that Lots of times when we do have these visits, uh, we plan on talking about one thing and, and, and boom, it goes somewhere else. And we would like to believe that we have a little guidance and a little help. Occasionally, um, it, it didn't, if, you hear, if you hear anything, it is either hail or snow. And uh, it's almost like Mother Earth is, <laughs> is cheering <laughs> us on, yes. saying, hey, go, go, hey, you know. you're doing it. Um, Girls. <laughs> I have not heard it like that before, but mm -mm. Su supposing we watch this in the summertime, then we'll say, oh, yeah, I remember. I remember that I, day. I, I remember, and there's another. When it's 95 know. out and we mm -hmm. don't have any water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have a, see, that's all that, that was. It just, just wanted to add second. something to the whole thing. So, so that's just how life mm -hmm. is, and we would like to think that sometimes we have guidance in, in bringing things out and, and sharing with you that... Um, you know, nobody else wants to touch because sometimes right. we do talk about things that maybe we shouldn't even talk about. Well, but. I don't know about should or shouldn't. You know, I think we should have talked about this today because mm -hmm. if it just reaches one person out there, exactly. one soul, troubled soul, yeah. that doesn't know that it's happened to, that they can relate to it and say, okay, and you know, and we can give help to them, then it was all worth it. Yeah. You know. And again, I want to say that just opening the front door and screaming, that's not, not what we mean. And don't call us when you do that. No, because, <laughs> please don't. Because that's not what we mean. This will be an experience that will remain you, with you for the, for the rest of your life. And if you li live to be another millennium, a millennium. Um, mm -hmm. Oh my, my. I, I believe you will always remember that. I believe and, I will too. Mm -hmm. And I, I have, I was never the same after that. I, I have not been either. Has your life gotten better a little bit? You oh yes. Oh yes. My life's going. My, I think my life right now is probably better than it's ever been in my whole life. Um, I'm more, uh, I'm calmer. Mm-hmm. I feel more settled and more assured of exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. um, mm, no, I can't really think. I mean, I, I, I can't think of anything that I really want. I want my car to stop leaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's, about it. That's about it. But I'm taking it in on Tuesday yeah. to have that fixed. 
And you, you make wonderful flower arrangements. Oh, yes, in, I love, in, in oh, fact, yes. Nancy makes the sets occasionally. I love working with flowers. I love working with rocks. Mm -hmm. I make containers out of tree bark. Those are my, that's my, working with anything from nature. Any, I make feather arrangements. That's what I, oh, that's what I wanted to say, too. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Now, could we, could man ever make anything that God makes? Can we ever make anything that is that beautiful, Lillian? Yeah. And look at these feathers. See, they came from the same bird. Mm -hmm. But are the markings the same? No. No. The markings are not the same. These are all different markings. And that's what I, intrigues me so much, is that nothing is the same in God's kingdom. It's all different. All different. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like. This is another rock that... Um, there's one down in front that is, uh, looks like, oh, a little, it's blue, and it looks, I don't know if you can see it down there, but this is what it looked like before it was cut in two. Now, does this rock look like there would be anything magnificent and beautiful and wonderful on the inside of it? Uh, to some people, no, but some of them, we know better. Yes, we know so, better, so. yes, we do. We do. Yeah, we, we, we do. Yeah, and we're, <laughs> when we're out in the middle of Idaho and have nobody to talk to. We, we talk to. It's amazing <laughs> what, we'll, but, what we'll talk to. Yeah. But the, 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 the point is, is that sometimes you look at people and you see the roughness of them. Mm -hmm. And if you just dig a little deeper, yeah. then you see the inside and the beautiful. Uh, uh, this is something that I like, if I may share with our friends, that I copied out of the paper. Oh, okay. It's just a little thing. It says, there's always so much to do. And we always, we think we always mm -hmm. have so much to do. And, you know, we have this to do. We have that to do. We're always rushing around doing that. With so much to do, sometimes it's nice just to be. That must be why we're called human beings and not human doings. Oh, how <laughs> cool. I get too busy. Is, yeah. I, I have this on my refrigerator and I get too busy yeah. or too, I go over and I go, that's right, I'm a human being. I'm to be. I'm not always meant, meant to, do. to do. That mm -hmm. is really great. Well, usually I ask the guest, is there anything you wanted to, you know, relate to the friend and I guess you. I guess I you, just you, did. You, you did that, so mm -hmm. that, that's out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, You feel like it, it's hard to talk to your children these days. Um, I seem to have a problem with that. Are, are we out of step with time now, you think? I think it's hard for me in some respects. I mean, the, all my children have their own children, and I see them being mothers, you know. Mm -hmm. And they're all doing the very best job they can. And I'm happy for them because my one daughter is a single mom, but the other uh, three have mates that are helping them, which I believe makes a lot of difference uh, in, um, in the stress level or the responsibility level that mm -hmm. is put upon you. But what I find myself, yes, for a short, yes, I do, find my, it, I do find it more difficult and I don't know why. I mean, we're getting, I, don't, I can't answer that. I'm trying to think, why is it? And I think I, the least I say, the better it is. Mm -hmm. I think we're getting wiser. You as, think that's it? Um, you probably yeah. just keep uh, our mouths shut. Yeah, because we, we have experienced more and we are learning more things. And, I think uh, that's true. And our priorities have changed since we had that primal scream. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. My pr priorities have changed yeah. a lot. Yeah, so what used to bend me, you know, mm -hmm. get me bent out of shape, it just isn't important anymore. And uh, it, As a matter of fact, like you get your life back, you know? it was a material object that hurt me so deeply, mm -hmm. which was nonsense. But I mean, there was a lot leading up to that. But it was a material object that really that was the one that it threw me over the edge. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, it has changed my priorities. It, I can't. Um, go into depth on the material object. I yeah, mean, well, that's okay. But you, it was, uh, that, yeah. uh, and when I left, uh, I couldn't, it was my, I couldn't understand why this had happened, why this, this, this 
it has been set up the way it was and why it happened with this item mm -hmm. and when I left and uh, I was just very hurt very deeply that it had happened this way and that was the end that was the end that's what we call a trigger mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that would trigger right that's and that's what you all have to remember also something will trigger this it just doesn't you just don't walk down the road yeah, and say, scream. I'm gonna do this. Mm -mm. Yeah. And and people the people around us sometimes, you know, here again, uh, throughout the shows I've been telling you to be good to yourself and care for your fellow man and things this like is true. that. Because here again we never know um, what baggage the other person this has. Is not, true. not just suppose and um, I had saw you that day and say, How are you, Nancy? And you had went off on me like that. Um, I would have thought I needed to protect my life. Uh, That's because, true. Because uh, here you're dealing with something that is, it sounds like it is not of earthly nature. This is true. Is that what I wanted? No, uh, not earthly earth origin. No, earthly origin. Origin, so what do you do? And it just so happened we were by ourselves. And um, wh why I, I kind of hope we left you with some thoughts on that today. Mm -hmm. And um, and you can say anything to me these days because I have I'm done with my scream, so now I'm. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I'm just you can being say ugly. anything. Uh, I just. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it can't get like that anymore. No, it can't, mm -hmm. and it can't ever get that way again. And that's what's so wonderful. I, I don't know that it's so wonderful. I would have preferred not to have experienced it, but I know it will never happen again. Mm -hmm. And that is the assurance. That's, that's yeah. a good assurance. And. Um, and we can go on from now and just do a lot of good things. Good things for them, yeah. A yes. lot of good things, yeah. Yes. So that's what we're going to be doing. And that's what I want to do. I guess that's what I kind of dedicated 99 to in my life is I just want to do as many good things mm -hmm. as I can do and reach as many people, not that I need to reach people, but I mean interact with as many people as I can be a blessing in other people's lives and, you know, mm -hmm. and interact with them. That's what I want to do. That's my, and do my rocks and my flowers and my, you know, that type of thing. But I just, how do you, how do you feel? You had hedgehogs for a while. Oh, you know? geez, yeah. yes. 48 of them. Yeah, <laughs> so that, that kept you busy. Kept many. me real busy mm -hmm. uh, cleaning out. That, I was going to get very wealthy. <laughs> yeah, I remember that on <laughs> Cleaning yeah. out hedgehog cages, 48 of them, every four days, mm -hmm. was quite the task. But that's what you needed at the time. I did need that at the yeah, time, they, really. they needed you. you know, oh, they, they sure did, you. the little. Yeah. And I want to tell you, when a, little, when a hedgehog gives birth, they look like little almonds with little spikes on them. And boy, <laughs> that mother hedgehog is extremely protective. And um, so uh, that was an experience. That was a great experience. So they probably look prehistoric too. They so did look it, very we, prehistoric. We <laughs> right back to the subject. <laughs> Extremely prehistoric. Prehistoric, yeah. And yeah, no, uh, I'm really grateful that, that we did have this talk. You know, I am Because too. I, I would have felt kind of silly if I was the only person that. Talking about it. Yeah, that, that thought that, that had happened too. You know. yeah. Well, I was so grateful when I found out that you had, yeah. because then I could, you know, I yeah. could speak with someone about it. I couldn't yeah. speak with anyone. Yeah. How do you speak to someone? Will you go up to someone and say, hey, the strangest thing happened to me like na last night. I howled, and, yes. mm -hmm. and they, then they really think you're... Yeah, and they, they say, would you like me to help you, dear? And, yeah. and, off, to, <laughs> and off you go. Off you go. Yeah, so... Um, you have certainly made my life richer in a lot of areas. Oh, so and, have you, and Lily, So mine. many, many times I'm grateful for, I have to say her whole name again, Nancy Williams. Oh. <laughs> it's okay, you put me in the book. So, yes. Let's see, it was uh, 30 seconds or so. If you have one more rock you want to point oh, out. And okay, then we, let me see. I'm going to keep you from jumping. So Oh, we keep don't. me from jumping. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Um, the big hunk of rose quartz down in front. I think that is just, I have that sitting in my living room. Mm -hmm. Oh, this. 
I found this in Idaho when I was on my archaeological dig. Okay. This is 6,000 years old. Yeah, and okay. I found it. And was I excited. It's mm -hmm. called a projectile point. Actually, what it is is a spearhead. And they put it inside their spears and wrapped it up. And then yeah. that's how it went. 6,000 years old. So thank you. So, so anyway, you, you saw parts of the pyramids. You saw, um, you, you saw very old things and very new things. And um, again, if you write a letter or a card, uh, feel free to make comments, you know, even they don't have to be all good. Sometimes mm -hmm. we can take a little criticism. If oh, we, absolutely. Mm -hmm, if you could just uh, stay in touch and let us know that what we are, what we are doing is okay, you know, mm -hmm. and we will be happy to, but, oh, there is not that beautiful? Oh, yes. Yeah, where we, uh, we can be able to help you and assist you and um, in an educational way. And um, I, I just can't thank you enough for having come to share that with me, oh, you know. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to share yeah. it. Because it will, I just have this feeling it's going to help someone else. Yeah. So. And it, it quits snowing. It quits snowing. Oh, it quits and inhaling. So, so universe must be I sure hope Arabella isn't flooded. Yeah. That's my car, you know. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping that um, universe kind of gave us a blessing by having, by having done that and we'll have I a safe so. trip home. And we will have a safe trip home. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's interesting. With Lily and it's the universe, with me it's God, but you know what? It's the same. It is. Yeah. That's what makes it so wonderful. Exactly the same, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just... I just thought God needed more letters than three. Than I know. <laughs> That's what you've told me before. He needs more letters yeah. than three. Yeah, I, I just thought God should have more letters than three. And, That's and right. That's, and that's it. And so we have almost come to the to the close of our visit here. Mm -hmm. um, we thank you so much. Uh, Anchorage has been in touch, and I do appreciate everything you have. You know, you have sent our ways, and we hope that spring will bless you very soon and um, some of the other parts of the country. And um, just stick with us, and we will try to find subjects and things to visit, you know, for this visit that uh, however we are guided, that's exactly what we are going mm -hmm. to do. And so I want to thank you all for coming. And... Uh, have a wonderful week, and we will see you again next time. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome. I love you. Thank ya. you. I love yeah. you, too, Lillian, very yeah. much.